I'm Benjamin Lawson, and these photos are of my grandfather, Edwin Lawson, a hero in World War II, a college professor and author, and a beloved father, grandfather, and leader. That's me, about three years old. Pop Pop, as we called him, or sometimes just Pop, holding me tightly, telling me about the world, and answering all of my questions. He was my hero. A few years later, as I neared the end of high school, my sister and I accompanied Pop Pop to his annual gathering of World War II service buddies in an organization called the 73rd Bomb Wing. Jennifer and I would attend most years with him because he is in his late 80s and he needed us, much like we needed him in those earlier years. Pop Pop was a central fire control gunner on the B-29 aircraft named the Leading Lady. There were almost 4,000 B-29 bombers manufactured for the war. They arrived in the Marianas Islands in late 1944. They helped win the war within nine months of duty. The CFC gunner was the lead armory crew member, overseeing two additional gunners, all stationed in a pressurized compartment in the middle of the aircraft. The CFC gunner fired his guns by pushing automated buttons, which in turn fired the machine guns on top of the aircraft. He could also override the other two gunners, if necessary, by firing their weapons if he saw the need from his perch, which included a small round blister window allowing a full 360 degree view of the enemy aircraft above the B-29. There were two other gunners on every B-29. A tail gunner located in a special and dedicated compartment at the tail of the aircraft working independently of the chief gunner, and the bombardier who occasionally manned a single 50mm gun located at the very front portion of the cockpit in front and below the pilot and co-pilot. The bombardier can engage the weapon by inserting a single machine gun through the special opening, if needed for protection and if he was not involved in the navigation of the aircraft or bombsite duties. Jennifer and I learned so much from our grandfather by attending the annual gatherings of his friends. We also saw and toured the inside of the B-29 named Doc, one of the last two operating B-29 aircraft in Wichita, Kansas. Seeing inside the aircraft and understanding the complexity of the airplane was amazing, especially after hearing from our grandfather over the years tell us his stories of service. He was also particularly proud to show us the targeting computer of the B-29, which allowed him that control of firing multiple weapons. It was incredible to see such advanced technology from so long ago. Our father, Dave, is on the right, joined us as well. Unless you study the history of World War II, many may not understand the extraordinary massive challenges and tragic failures of the original European campaign and the extraordinary loss of human life. Our grandfather taught us about the fragility of life, the courage it took to serve on the island of Saipan, the dangerous daily missions, and the ultimate loss of 26,000 servicemen in the Pacific Theater. You see, on January 2nd, 1945, Pop-Pop was wounded while on the ground in Saipan by a large bomb dropped from an unexpected enemy aircraft over Saipan. Shrapnel from the bomb seriously injured his feet and ankles, requiring emergency treatment in the base hospital. He missed his B-29 mission the very next morning, and his crew, on the leading lady, departed early with a new CFC gunner, Corporate Richard Steinberg, ab aboard the aircraft. Tragically, the leading lady was shot down in Japan on January 3rd, 1945, killing all but the tail gunner. It is reported that 75 to 100 Japanese Tony fighters attacked, with one plane losing control and ramming into the leading lady near the cockpit in the number three engine, on the left side, ripping off the left wing. This is Pop Pop holding my older sister, Jennifer. He taught us about many things in life. He taught us to be gentle, to be kind. He taught us to value life. He possessed a keen spirit for human dignity and honor, even in the face of a world war. Our grandfather taught us to be giving to others, to smile, to hold on to every second of life to cherish family and friends. He was also proud of our dad, of Jennifer, and of me. He was a magnificent man who, who taught us rules as youngsters, to play fair, and to eat, enjoy a game even when we lose. When Jen was in seventh grade, 
She was honored in history class to present a report on our grandfather, Ed Lawson, explaining to her classmates what a B-29 bomber was, its size, and its power. Sadly, she also had to explain the January 3rd crash of his airplane, The Leading Lady, where the crew perished, and Pop Pop back on Saipan, hearing the excruciating news that his team was gone by radio the later that day. And more happily, she was able to tell her classmates about Pop's survival meant that he was able to attend the years of gatherings with his war friends and the surviving family members of the leading lady. Our grandfather was a psychology researcher, and he wrote over 160 books and articles throughout his academic career, including articles in the New York Times. Pop Pop had an inspiring sabbatical leave for a year in Jerusalem, Israel in 1973 to 1974, which my father tagged along for. Pop Pop was awarded the U.S. Fulbright Lectureship appointment in Jordan in 1981, teaching at Yarmouk University. Our grandfather and grandmother, Irene Kentner, married in 1949. They had three sons, including our father, Dave Lawson of Connecticut. Our grandparents were married for 69 years. Pop and his family moved to Boston when he was just a child. The ideas and concepts that carried him through World War II and into his educational career were planted in him as a youth in Boston by his parents, teachers, synagogue, friends, and the community. On January 3rd, 1945, when the leading lady was shot down near Nagoya, our grandfather realized that he would no longer belong to the team that he has grown to trust and lead. He would make new friends in the aircraft known as the Heavenly Body, a challenge, but one he welcomed open-armed. Ed Lawson realized that to survive, every B-29 crew had to grow together and bond as a team in completing missions in the Pacific Theater. Pop Pop earned the Purple Heart due to the explosion on January 2nd that injured his left ankle. He was also awarded the Three Oak Leaf Clusters, the Air Medal, and his beloved Distinguished Flying Cross. He flew 35 accredited missions on B-29s from Saipan. Only 20,000 airmen were awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross for bravery and hero heroism beyond the call of duty, less than 10% of those serving in the Pacific Theater. In more recent years, the people of Saipan also awarded Pop Pop the medal called Our Grateful Islands Remember, created by the people of the U.S. Territory of the, the Marianas Islands. In 1987, Pop Pop and Mima, our name for Irene, welcomed our mother, Lisa, into the family when she married our dad, Dave Lawson. Lisa and Pop Pop became close over the years, eventually leading to Pop Pop publishing a short story about their differences in culture. For instance, when my mother first met Mima and Pop Pop, my grandmother asked if she would like some tea, which my mother eagerly accepted, as she grew up in Georgia uh, and she expected some sweet iced tea. Much to my mother's surprise, the tea ended up being very hot, as traditional to my grandparents, which resulted in laughter all around. During this past year, my wife, Sismita Gadre, joined our family. She is pictured here with me at our wedding. While my grandparents have passed, we know that they were there in spirit, celebrating this joyous moment. Today, Saipan, Tidian, Guam, and many other islands in the Pacific are safe and free and part of the United States as official territories. People all across the Northern Marianas Islands welcome American soldiers who gave their lives to save their islands, cultures, and their people. People from Japan, Australia, the Middle East, and the US, and many other countries visit Saipan each year. Visitors enjoy hiking, swimming in oceanside grottos, and walking along miles of pristine beaches. Red flame trees grow along the major oceanfront roads. When the war was over, Pop Pop's mission was not finished. As you may have gathered, the annual reunions were not made up of just his service buddies, but also the families, friends, and loved ones of those that were lost in the war. He made it his mission in life to ensure the memories of his fallen brethren were honored. He annually attended these reunions, corrected government archives, 
and maintain websites honoring the members of his bomb wing. His understanding of others is found in his writings, his service to all, and his love for his fellow man. He never questioned in 1943 when he was called to serve, to serve, even though it interrupted his studies at college. He understood the dangers and risks, but like his brothers in the war effort, Edwin Lawson was front and center. His job as a CFC gunner was to protect his plane, his peers, and America. And these values were handed down to his children, like our father, Dave Lawson, and to us, his grandchildren, and eventually to Pop Pop's great-grandchildren one day. It is our job and our responsibility to share the story of Ed Lawson, our hero, and one day share this story of sacrifice to our own children.